Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to talk about valuation and we're gonna look at clear secure. And we're gonna see if we can actually put together a valuation of the model. We'll talk about a little bit about valuation, what it means of a business and compare it to its current enterprise value and see if it's a good investment. I always like to talk about this one parable. I always love this video that Warren Buffett has in his, one of his annual meetings where he's asked about valuation, how to value a business. And he brings up this, this parable about a bird in a hand is worth two in the bush. Right? And sometimes it's converted to a sparrow in the hand is worth more than a thousand flying sparrows. Something along those lines. But it's, it's this concept that a business is just cash flows that are coming in and you're getting more cash flows out. So let's go to that idea, a bird in the hand, one bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. All right, what does that really mean? So let's imagine that you have one bird and you want to get two, ber two birds in five years but current interest rates are roughly around 5%, right? Is that a good investment? Is it better to put your one bird today and get Aaron a 5% return every year? Or is it better to wait five years and get two birds? Well, if you do the math, you'll find that it is a good investment. So it's about a roughly 14.8% annual return to wait five years and get your two birds. So if you do that, you could basically take, you take the ending value, which is two birds, and the beginning value is one bird, and you take the nth root of that, which is five in this case, and that would be roughly 14.8% return. So that is a good investment to wait five years for two birds. But let's say that interest rates are 20%. Would that be a good investment? What is it better though? Is a bird in the hand worth more than two in the bush in five years? Well, in that case, it's not. It's better to have one bird, or in that case, it is better to have one bird. And compound that at 20% then then instead of waiting for five years to get two birds because that's only a 14% return. So the same concept is when you're looking at valuation, right? When you're looking at a business and all you're putting is cash in to get more cash out into the future and you have to think about time when you're going to get that cash and compare it to current interest rates today. Is it a better return in that business or is it a better return with the current interest rates, riskless interest rates today? Okay, so so we understand that concept. Well, let's take a look at clear secure. So I, I you know, before I even talk about that um, spreadsheets or models, I, I usually, I used to love using spreadsheets and like projecting out into the future and understanding that. But what really matters as I've gotten older is it's not really about the model or the spreadsheet, it's really about the business. Does it have a strong economic competitive advantage that it's, that it's gonna keep here for a long time? Is it gonna be a company that's gonna be here for a hundred years or my investment horizon, my lifetime? That's what matters. You want businesses that produce cash flows for a long time and are sustainable and high returns on investment. So once you've determined that, which I believe, I think that we found a great company here, then we can really think about valuation. So let's, I like to use a discount model, a very simple one instead of long spreadsheets. And it is, it is a discounted cash flow model, but it, it's a little more advanced. So instead of your normal discount model where you project out into features some cash and, and you discount that today, I like to use something called an H model. So an H model splits out the terminal value of a company and the high growth value of a company. So let's, let's take a look at that. So if you look at this current model, and I'll, I'll briefly talk about this first term here, that's your terminal value. You take your D, Z, D naught, which is your cash flow, and you grow it at some growth rate. In this case, it's, I'm gonna use the economic growth rate of GDP for the US economy, which is roughly 3%, and you discount that back. The second term, that's the high growth value. And so what you're doing is you're taking the cash flows and you have some high growth rate that you think those cash flows are gonna grow at, at some time period. And then you're gonna slowly reduce that to that low growth rate period of that 3% that I, that I used. And that H, that's the half-life. So I think that, let's say that I think this high growth phase is gonna happen for, for 10 years. And, and over that 10 years, it's gonna slowly grow, slow down to that slow growth rate. So the half-life would be five, right? So 10 years and a half-life would be five. So let's look at the model that I already produced for clear secure. Here we can see the spreadsheet. So let's say that D naught, in this case, the cash flows are 200 million. And we determined that last, in 2023, they had free cash flows of roughly 200 million, right? In our last video. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna use a discount rate of 10%. I'm going to use a high growth rate of 20%. I think that it's, it grew, it grew free cash flows by more than that, I think, in the last from 2020 to 2023, but I'm just gonna pick 20%. It's a little arbitrary, but I think it's, it's conservative. I'm gonna use 3% as the long-term growth rate, that's a GDP growth rate, and I'm gonna say the half-life is five, okay? 
I think this is gonna happen over a 10 year period, but the half-life will be five. Now, when I do the math, when you do plug those in, you actually get a high growth value of roughly 2.4 billion and a terminal value of 2.9 billion. If you sum that together, those values, you get a present value of $5.3 billion. So what is that saying? Well, if we compare that to the current enterprise value today, which is roughly around four, four to 4.5 billion, that is a almost 20% reduction or undervalue, uh, undervaluement of, of that investment. So in this case, I do think it's undervalued or fairly valued. So that, that is great to see. Um, of course, you always have to be understanding of these assumptions, right? These are all just assumptions that you're that you're putting into a model. And like I said, where let me manage is, is this a strong business? Is it have a strong competitive advantage? And I always like that notion of garbage in is garbage out, right? So you really have to be smart and conservative about your, your ideas about this business and, the, and their growth rates and their, and, their, and their discount rates. So I hope you liked this video. Um, I know this was a little quicker than usual, but really, you know, valuation to me is something that should be done in your head and should be pretty quick. What matters is the economics of the business. And I do, but I do believe this is a fairly valued business. I do believe this is a good investment. It's undervalued. It does have some type of safety, margin of safety. If it fell down a little bit more, I would definitely increase my investment. So I'm waiting for that, that opportunity. Um, but I hope you like this video. And until next time, guys, see ya.